morning. Let me begin by thanking Representative Diana DeGette and Representative Barbara Lee, our extraordinary co-chairs of the Pro-Choice Caucus, for their leadership and for gathering us here today, united as House Democrats in full, complete, and unequivocal support for reproductive freedom. Yeah. Let me also thank Representative Judy Chu, Representative Kathy Manning, and Representative Susan Wild for their extraordinary leadership. Two years ago, the far right extreme Supreme Court majority overturned Roe v. Wade and detonated reproductive freedom for millions of American women. The catastrophic decision in Dobbs was just one part of the extreme MAGA Republican plan to impose a nationwide abortion ban, outlaw contraception, and limit access to IVF. Today, reproductive freedom is under assault throughout America. House Democrats unequivocally believe in a woman's freedom to make her own reproductive health care decisions, period, full stop. It's a decision that should be between a woman, her family, her faith, and her doctors. The far right's extreme effort to take away reproductive freedom is unacceptable, unconscionable, and un-American. We must stop them, and together, we will stop them. House Democrats. House Democrats will continue to fight for nationwide access to abortion care. House Democrats will continue to fight for access to contraception. House Democrats will continue to fight for access to IVF. We will continue to stand up. We will continue to show up. We will continue to speak up. We will pass the women's Health Protection Act. We will pass the Right to Contraception Act. We will pass IVF protection legislation. We will not rest until reproductive freedom is the law of the land for every single woman in the United States of America. It is now my honor to yield to a tremendous champion for reproductive freedom, our extraordinary whip, the Honorable Catherine Clark. Thank you, Mr. Leader. I am so proud to stand with this caucus as we mark this critical anniversary of taking away, rolling back 50 years of a constitutional right under Trump's Supreme Court. What has happened? in the last two years, 27 million American women now live under health care bans. Doctors are being criminalized. IVF and contraception are under attack. And what does this mean? Let me share you a story from my second pregnancy, where a routine ultrasound showed that there was no longer a fetal heartbeat. And when I needed abortion care, because there wasn't a full miscarriage to prevent infection, to preserve future fertility, I got that care without question. 
Fast forward to a post-Dobbs, a post-Roe v. Wade, Texas. Amanda Zarowski water broke at 18 weeks pregnant. Her pregnancy could not survive. Yet her doctor, because of criminal penalties, could not give the care she recommended. She was told to go home, wait for infection to set in, and it did. She had a sepsis infection, spent days in the ICU, barely survived, and today does not know if she will ever be able to become pregnant again. What is the difference in the outcome of our two stories of miscarriage? It is Donald Trump and the GOP who has dismantled women's health care and reproductive freedom in this country. We are at a crossroads. We are going to choose freedom or we are going to choose extremism. And every single time this has come before Americans for a vote, they have chosen freedom. That is in Kansas, Michigan, Ohio, Tennessee, Kentucky. Every single time Americans stand with freedom. And this caucus and this president stand with them. And I am so pleased to introduce a champion for reproductive freedom, a champion for returning these critical decisions to American women and American families where they belong, co-chair of our pro-choice caucus, Barbara Lee. Yeah. Well, good morning, everyone. Let me first thank Leader Jeffries, Whip Clark, Chair Aguilar, our co-chair of the Pro-Choice Caucus, Diana DeGette, for uh, their bold leadership. Uh, I am a proud Democrat, and I am so proud of our Democratic Caucus. Thank you all very much for staying the course on this issue that uh, really is about life or death. As co-chair of the Pro-Choice Caucus with uh, Congresswoman DeGette, uh, I'm proud to be in this fight with all of you and with all of our incredible, inspiring coalition partners doing the work on the ground. Two years ago, five extremist Supreme Court justices voted to take our country back decades and revoke a fundamental right of millions by overturning Roe. This is yet another attack on our democracy. Now millions of Americans of reproductive age are living without access to abortion care, suffering preventable harm to their bodies and their lives. This anniversary, it's a stark reminder of the casualties in the GOP's war on reproductive freedom. But it also must be a call to action. It's a wake-up call because this cannot continue. Tonight, the two candidates for president will debate for, the, excuse me, the first time in this election. I hope the country is paying attention, not only to how they talk about abortion, but what they've actually done about it. From day one, the Biden administration has shown a clear and early commitment to sexual and reproductive health and rights. He has taken concrete actions to protect access to abortion, including medication abortion, the ability to travel for reproductive care, access to affordable quality contraception, safeguarding the privacy of patients and health care providers, and more. The extreme GOP and their allies on the Supreme Court could not be more opposite. They've continued an assault on reproductive freedom through harmful legislation at each level of government and in states across the nation. And let's be clear. Republicans are ready and eager to institute a national ban and create more suffering. We cannot let them do that. We cannot let GOP extremism continue to subvert the will of the people. As someone who had an unsafe and illegal abortion before Roe, we cannot allow this country to revert back to those days. The majority of Americans support the right to an abortion. Our caucus won't stop fighting until our laws reflect our democratic values and our own freedoms to make our own health care decisions without interference, mind you, from judges and elected officials. Thank you again. And now 
I'd like to yield to our woman warrior, Diana DeGuin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barbara. Well, as you've heard, it was two years ago today when the Supreme Court, for the first time in our nation's history, took away a freedom that all Americans have. And the results were swift and they were devastating. 21 law states have banned or severely restricted abortion. And those laws took effect the very next day after the Dobbs decision. In Ohio, a young girl who had been the victim of rape had to be taken across state lines to get the health care that she needed. In Texas, as you heard, someone was sent, a woman was sent home because the doctor was afraid of criminal prosecution and she almost died from sepsis before she could get the health care that she needed. I just saw the reports this week of, of the birth rates and the infant mortality, which have gone up since the Dobbs decision, up since the Dobbs decision. Imagine the cruelty and imagine the impact on countless Americans. One in three women and more than half of, the black, of black women in this country live in states where they don't have access to abortions. And as states enact new and tighten existing restrictions, and as the impacts of these cruel laws grow, more and more Americans are being forced to leave their homes, to somehow take leave from their jobs, and flee their states to get the care they need. And that's just the people who can afford to do that. Everybody else, too bad for them. In these draconian, and these draconian states, uh, laws, they don't just affect states like Colorado, or like Texas, they affect states like Colorado, my home state, where abortions have gone up by three times and where Coloradoans have to wait along with everybody else to get the health care they need. So what have the House Republicans done? to alleviate this problem. They refused to take up the Women's Health Protection Act, but not only that, 187, 187 members of the House Republican Caucus have co-sponsored legislation that says that pregnancy begin, or that, that personhood begins when the egg and the sperm meet, giving, giving those those fetuses the same rights from conception that all of us have today. What would that mean if that became law that 187 of them have sponsored? It would mean that all abortions, no exceptions from day one, would be banned. It would mean that in, in, in vitro fertilization would be banned. It would mean that many common forms of birth control would be banned. And it would mean that life-saving stem cell research would be banned. I am not exaggerating. I am not exaggerating. This is the agenda of the far right-wing extreme House majority. They don't really want to talk about it right now because they realize that, that the vast majority of Americans and the vast majority of their constituents oppose these extreme laws. But make no mistake, if they keep the House, if they take the Senate, and if Donald Trump wins the White House, this is exactly the far right majority that, that, will, that, that, that will enact these laws. We simply cannot happen, let this happen on behalf of the American people, and we will not let it happen. One of the first bills we will pass in Congress, when we take the majority and Hakeem Jeffries becomes the next speaker, is the Women's Health Protection Act. And we, and, and we will restore freedom for all Americans to make their own health care decisions, including abortion, for everybody in every state in this country, because that's the way we do it in America. I'm now pleased to introduce 
the primary sponsor of the Women's Health Protection Act, another fierce warrior for choice, Congresswoman Judy Chu. Abortion is health care. Always has been, always will be. But two years ago, the MAGA justices on the Supreme Court ripped away reproductive freedoms from tens of millions of Americans with their Dobbs decision. For the first time in American history, young women have fewer rights than their grandmothers. But it does not have to be this way. Congress can pass my bill, H.R. 12, the Women's Health Protection Act, to restore the protections of Roe and protect patients and providers from state-level bans and restrictions that impede access. Now, in the last Congress, we passed this bill off the floor twice, and it became the most supported pro-choice bill in the history of Congress. And I know that when we take back the House, when we keep the Senate, and when we re-elect President Biden, this will be the first bill that will pass out of the floor and out of Congress. And with that, every woman in every zip code in this country will have the right to an abortion and reproductive freedom. You know, Republicans could provide relief to women in this country right now. But Republicans in Congress refuse to act. If Republicans had their way, Congress would pass a national abortion ban and this would be a nation of forced birth. But we, the House Democrats, are not done fighting. When we once again control Congress, we will send a bill to President Biden to sign to restore and strengthen Americans' reproductive freedoms. And now, I would like to turn the podium over to a champion for contraceptive rights, Congress member Kathy Manning. Thank you, and good morning, everyone. I am so proud to stand alongside Democratic leadership and my fellow House Democrats to draw attention to the widespread consequences of the Dobbs decision. Two years ago, when that horrifying Dobbs decision was handing, handed down, not only did it endanger women's health and turn back the clock on women's freedoms, but it also called into question other long-standing constitutionally protected freedoms. It gave extreme Republicans the green light to attack women's health care in any way they could, including by attacking birth control. In fact, in Justice Clarence Thomas's concurring opinion, he explicitly called for the reconsideration of Griswold versus Connecticut, the Supreme Court 1965 opinion that first established the constitutional right to use birth control. And that concurring opinion served as a rallying cry for extremist state legislatures to ramp up their attacks on birth control. That's why right after Dobbs was released, I introduced my Right to Contraception Act to safeguard that right for every American, the right to access the full range of FDA-approved birth control methods. The right to birth control is supported by an overwhelming bipartisan majority of Americans, and almost every woman will use some form of birth control during her lifetime. I've seen many of my Republican colleagues claim to support birth control, but when they're put to the test, they show us who they really are. Last Congress, 195 Republicans voted against the right to use birth control, including every Republican from the state of North Carolina. Republicans blocked the bill in the Senate, both last Congress and this Congress. Speaker Johnson has refused to move this bill in the House. Meanwhile, radical politicians in states across the country are sharpening their knives. We're seeing laws introduced to restrict emergency contraception. 
governors vetoing bills to establish the right to birth control and watching as politicians blatantly spread disinformation to falsely conflate abortion with contraception. They are even going after IUDs, calling them abortifacients. So I introduced a discharge petition to force a vote on my Right to Contraception Act, and it's time for House Republicans to show the American people exactly where they stand on this issue. If they support birth control, like so many of them claim to, then they should sign my discharge petition and join us in making sure we can protect this essential form of health care. We can no longer play defense with our reproductive rights. We must go on offense and proactively safeguard birth control at the federal level. Thank you. And now I'm going to turn over the, the podium to my friend, our chair of the Democratic Caucus, Pete Aguilar. One, one second. For one second. I'm, 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 I'm going to turn over the chair to my dear friend, Diana DeGette, who's going to step in. Thank, uh, thank you. And I, help us talk about IVF. No. No. Okay. Um, so, so I just want to jump in and say we just this minute learned the Supreme Court has, in fact, confirmed its leaked decision on the emergency abortion laws in Idaho just this moment. And so what they have done is they've dismissed the emergency appeal. What this means, practically speaking, is that women in Idaho, even despite Idaho's very restrictive abortion laws, will be able to still get emergency abortions while the court case makes its way through court. But let's not be under any illusions. Idaho only allows people in emergency situations, in emergency rooms, to get abortions. And so all the rest of the people in Idaho who need abortions as part of their regular health care still are banned from getting abortions. This is good news, but believe you me, it does not change any of what we've said today. Thanks, and thank you, Pete, for letting me jump in. And now I yield to our wonderful caucus chair. Thank you so much, Diana, for your leadership, and thank you to Leader Jeffries and Whip Clark uh, for bringing us together today. We've heard from members who represent the country and our communities across this grand land to reflect the nation's rich diversity. But we are united by a common purpose, to undo the damage that Donald Trump's Supreme Court has done to the millions of American women living under cruel abortion bans. The Democratic Caucus is so fortunate to have an incredible group of leaders, especially those here today, in the fight for reproductive freedom. For two years, our members have been on the front lines, in their communities, and they will not stop working until abortion care is accessible for women across the country and IVF is safe from attacks of MAGA extremists. And we know we can't let up because extreme Republicans have shown time and time again that they will not accept anything less than a national abortion ban and to end IVF as we know it. House Republicans want to limit reproductive freedom. House Democrats say no. House Republicans want to go after contraception. House Democrats say no. House Republicans want to eliminate IVF and your ability to make your own decisions about your family. House, House Democrats say, say no. no. We will not let that happen. We will not let their extremism continue. Together, House Democrats will keep the focus on the issue of reproductive freedom from now until November. We will defend the right of every American to make their own decisions about when and how to start a family. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah.